Welcome to Energy Works. Today we're talking about kickstarting your health. We've all had a great holiday, we've all eaten lots of junk and enjoyed every bit of it, but now it's time to rein it back in and get back to our health and and our vitality and to do the things that we need to do to help ourselves get back into gear. So I guess this is to encourage me as much as it is to encourage you as well. So what are some of the things that you feel you might need to do to help yourself be your best self? So maybe some of the things are starting to eat better things, you know, get back into your veggies or your green smoothies or, you know, do you need to up your water and have better quality water perhaps? Do you need to make sure your sleep is is being taken care of? Uh, so recently I was diagnosed with sleep apnea, which was quite horrifying to me, but it uh, turns out I have uh, very small air pipes and so um, apparently I stopped breathing many times in the night. So I've been trying out a CPAP machine and the dentist is making me some sort of appliance to help my jaw sit more forward while I'm sleeping to open the air vents as much as possible. So, you know, whatever we need to do to help our sleep be better, because of course, when we sleep, our body repairs, our brain cells shrink down and the cerebrospinal fluid does a big flush and helps clear out the toxins. So it's important that we get enough sleep to help our body even to just detox our brain at night. Also, our, you know, our joints repair, all, all the repair happens at night while we're sleeping. So, you know, making sure that we have good sleep uh, sleep standards, um, you know, keeping as much electromagnetic stuff away from us as possible. And also, you know, to get enough sleep and to be able to have dark while you sleep to allow, again, that repair. Uh, so the other thing that's important is to make sure we move, you know, to pump our lymphatic system, you know, whether you walk or swim or jog or or dance or skate or, you know, ride your bike or, you know, whatever it is that you need to do to move, movement needs to happen. And, of course, movement is a sign of life, you know, as people get older and more frail, they're less able to move. So working on your movement and your strength and your stability is really important, especially as we age. And the other thing is to eat mindfully. So sometimes we just can be in a hurry and we wolf food down, not really being grateful, not taking a moment to pray before we eat, making sure that when we're eating that it, what we're eating is good quality, but also that we're actually eating with gratitude and you know taking time to chew the food and to enjoy the food. The other thing is, I guess, being good. Uh, Grateful for what we have, that we have food, grateful that we have a body that works, grateful that we have a home to live in, grateful that we have, you know, supportive friends or family. Sometimes we can feel a bit unsupported. So, you know, reaching out to people that, um, you know, do support us. As always, we ask, is there anywhere in your body that's complaining or any aspect of your life that's not working right now? All right, so we're starting with the earth chakra, which is underneath the earth chakra. It's underneath our base chakra, which is about being grounded and being connected to the earth. Sometimes we don't feel very grounded. So this is about pulling ourselves into the earthly experience. Sometimes we can get just too caught in our head. and We're not actually here. Oh, so Margaret said, on Monday I woke with a longer left leg, which has been causing me pain in a few areas. And Lisa, Lisa lower back a bit sore. Okay, thank you. Oh, I definitely need some Cairo. If one leg's longer than the other. All right, disconnection with people in other countries. Oh, Judith. Hi, Judith. Her back is sore. All right, so it's two sore backs. All right. And... I think we all have common problems. It's like, and I think it's helpful to support each other with these things. All right, so let's go into our sacral chakra. Now, what comes up is allowing offence by others. So people can do things that we don't like 
And we can give them a lot of power to make ourselves uncomfortable or we can observe what happens. Oh, Kim Honeyman, make that three saw backs. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, Kim. All right. So definitely stuff to clear in the back. So the sacral chakra, of course, is around the sacrum. So that's the lower part of your back. So is it the lower back that's hurting or the middle back or the upper back? And it's also about, you know, our power, balancing money, sex and power sort of thing. So lower back pain is definitely included in the sacral chakra. All right, I am a creative and sensual being. Do you feel creative? How do you create? Often when we create, we feel good. Sometimes we might create experiences for other people or we might create a safe haven for animals or we might create art or we might create safety for people. What do we create? All right, healing occurs every time I rest, relax, and allow myself enjoyment. So sometimes as as mothers, we can forget to enjoy life. It's like we can be too busy doing and forget to be being or forget to be a being. All right, I allow others to grow when they're ready to do so. So often we want people to grow when we want them to grow, especially our kids. All right, I'm able to enjoy all emotions and give them room for expression. So what are you feeling right now? All parts of my back I still see. Okay. All right, so what's coming up is neurotic attachments. So what are we neurotically attached to? Um, Sometimes we can be neurotically attached to being right or being healthy or being strong or being seen as a kind or a good person. Sometimes we're neurotically attached to making everyone else do the right thing. Also, genetic component to this, dad's dad's side and the women. So this is like a long, like 53 generations. Grandchild, okay. So we're neurotically attached to grandchildren. Sometimes we are, aren't we? We really love them and we want what's best for them and we try to do everything in our power to help them have a good life. Okay, so something in our neck is coming up. I'm just using Ina Siegel's book. She talks about each level of the spine and what it means. Thinking that life isn't fair and definitely isn't. Unresolved pain and sadness, especially with those close to you. All right, so what are some of the unresolved pain and sadness you're feeling? Uh, Suppressing your feelings of anger and then erupting. Mm, Sinuses come up. So we're talking about unresolved pain and anger that we might feel. So what might that be from? So age 12 comes up and 15. Feeling defensiveness and feeling peeved. Okay, now we're going to go into our solar plexus chakra. All right, and this is about taking action. So what is it that you need to take action in? All right, I continually see and follow my divine path. All right, are we straight off our divine path? Are we getting a bit lost in the woodwork? Um, I love myself. So often that's the hardest person to love, isn't it? We can love others but not ourselves. And I think if we can love ourselves, we can actually love others better. I accept responsibility for all my decisions. All right, so T6 in our spines, which is the wiring to your tummy. So stuck in the belief system that loving someone means worrying about them constantly. Difficulty making empowering decisions. So indigestion on a physical level and obesity. So I think we all are facing a little bit of that after Christmas goodies. All right, so let's go into the throat chakra now. What are you needing to say? Or what are we saying to ourselves that's not necessarily truthful? So using busyness as a way of avoiding truth. So what are you keeping yourself busy with that perhaps is a dodge? All right, I substitute love, joy, and peace for old habits of addiction and abuse. So Sometimes we can be addicted to self-abuse or we can be addicted to keeping other people happy or a food, or a feeling, or a drink, or gambling, or sex, or whatever it is that we have the addiction to. It's okay for me to tell my story. 
And I would like this to be a safe place to tell your story. We're here to support each other in our journey of life and uh, the people that are here with us are not here by accident. Uh, Susanna says, too much of my mum's beautiful cooking. (laughs) How lovely. So we're talking about kickstarting our health and uh, we are all on that journey, aren't we? All right, so in our throat chakra. All right, so what's your story that you need to tell? What is it that needs to be heard or understood? Judith is saying, yes, I'm larger than I'd like to be. With the bad back, it's hard to be active. Very true. So what's the one thing that you can change? Even if you start with drinking a lot more water, your discs fill up with water at night while you sleep, so you're actually taller in the morning than you are when you go to bed at night. So if we're dehydrated, then it's hard for the discs to, you know, pump up and be as high and juicy as they should be. So, um, you know, even if you start with water, that will really help a lot. And also your psoas muscles and some of your neck muscles relate to your kidneys. So if your kidneys are crying because they don't have enough water, you will get a sore back and you'll get a sore neck. So even if you start with, you know, drinking lots of little sips of water work better than just a big glass at once. So, you, you know, and starting with water. All right, I'm becoming more creative each day. And uh, some people, I, I remember Monique, my daughter, when she was little, she wasn't drinking much water. And one of the girls that worked with me at the time made her a water chart. And so every, every time she drank her water, she got a little star, which she loved. So, you know, do you have to give yourself incentive? Do you have to set something in place to help you um, take care of that, you know? Kathy said lots of green veggies, 80% veggies, 20% protein, and as Tony said, lots and lots of water. Yeah, so that's a good a good base to start, isn't it? We really do need green veggies that alkalizes us and that does help our kidneys to function better. So often people are too acidic because if you think about like fruits acidic, grains are acidic, yeah, all those things are. Yeah, Susanna's talking about a walker, water tracker. So one of my sons got for Christmas a a bottle that lights up to remind you to drink water and it tracks your water. So, yeah, you probably do need someone to remind you or something to remind you to drink your water. All right, I'm confident in the healing power of love to open my throat for greater expression. So what, what do you need to say? And if you haven't got someone to say it to, can you write? Can you either journal or write poetry or, you know, write and burn if you need to? Do what you need to to express what's in, within you. If you think about to like, would you like to know more about your great grandmother or your aunt, or you know, you would like to understand more about their lives and how they lived. So I think to start recording our lives and how we live is important for us to express it, but also for other people later when we're gone to understand us. Yeah, do the saying being a type one diabetic, I need more water. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. All right, so now we're going back into the heart chakra. Um, so belonging. So do you belong? Where is a lack of belonging in your life? All right, also what's coming up here is conditional love, like needing people to do it our way. So tension or pain between the shoulder blades, this is also connected to the heart chakra and arm pain as well. So one of the oils that comes up is sandalwood. So sandalwood is about devotion to uh, like the higher power, sacred devotion. So sandalwood assists in quieting the mind so that individuals may hear the subtle voice of the spirit. It raises them into higher levels of consciousness. So sandalwood assists one in reaching beyond their current confines and belief systems. So if we think about... um, our health even, how are you considering yourself? Uh, are you considering yourself to be a healthy person or are you considering yourself to be a sick person or an overweight person or, you know, how are you thinking of yourself? Because it's like we have to change how we think about ourselves and how we uh, 
treat ourselves. So it's like I remember I used to work with a naturopath, Kath Aiken, and she would say every seven years you've totally replaced every cell in your body. So if you think about, um, you know, eating better, thinking better, drinking more water, getting enough sleep, moving your body more, all those things are all helpful and change our, our biochemistry, which allow the cells that reproduce to be healthier and better. So you can be a healthier person and, uh, you know, think long term too, not just for this immediate moment. So you might put some sandalwood in your diffuser or you can put it on your feet or it's quite a nice smell. You could put it as perfume or if you put it just under the base of your skull, that's where you get um, access to the blood vessels that go into your brain. So any of those you could use. Or if you like to smell it, you could put it on your wrist. So something else in our heart chakra. All right, I'm willing to go beyond my own limitations. And I think that came up before. So how are you limiting yourself? What are you telling yourself? What don't you think you can do? Or what are you not letting yourself do? Or what are you thinking you're too old for or too unhealthy for? Let's change it up. All right, I lovingly allow joy to flow through my mind. So I think often we get very caught up in duty and we forget about joy. But joy is important to help us sweeten our life so that we don't want to eat sweets. We actually make the experiences sweeter. All right. I allow others to completely feel their emotions. So often we can see our emotions as bad, but what about if it's just the opportunity to express things that have been stuck in us for a long time, whether it's in our lifetime or inherited baggage? All right, I'm increasing in my ability to love myself and others. And that sounds beautiful. I allow total freedom for others to share their gifts as well. All right, so getting dizzy. Um, Some sort of chemical toxicity. So something you're touching in the kitchen. So... Uh, often our dishwashing detergents are not environmentally friendly. So if they're not environmentally friendly, they're not body friendly. So have a look at what you're using and what you use to clean down your um, benches. You could, you know, make your own um, cleaners, like even vinegar in a spray bottle, apple cider vinegar, is helpful to kill bugs. Vinegar and bicarb can be useful to shift more stubborn things. Um, Even if you use like lemon oil or there's On Guard Cleaner that you can get, those things can be helpful to clean with that are less toxic because toxicity is also stress to the body, isn't it? As is lack of water or lack of good food. All these things are stressful to the body. We tend to think of stress as only what's in our head. All right, so cleaning up the toxicity in our environment and also what we use on our body, you know, like any creams and deodorant and anything that we use, you know, be mindful of what it is, that it is clean. Using a lot of Glen 20, yeah. See, I I wouldn't be happy to use that. There'd be a lot of chemicals in that. You could make uh, an essential oil spray using oils that help to kill bugs that will have less toxicity then. And you can make it quite diluted so that you're not, it's not too strong. The people that make things like that don't really care about your health. They care about selling their product. So, you know, finding either people that have a good motive when they sell their things or making things yourself. And we did a class with, um, yeah, with Margaret. She was showing us some things to make, but we have done other classes too. Cheryl did a class with us once about, Um, cleaners and things that we could make ourselves yes you could use eucalyptus oil you could use tea tree oil lemon oil even clove it's a bit strong but it also helps kill bugs and also helps us with parasites all right so i'm moving beyond judgment i think the hardest judgment to let it go of is the judgment of ourselves you know that our lack of perfection or our lack of being the healthiest or the strongest or the happiest that we should be 
but it is a journey and sometimes we have to experience the opposite to value what we really need and so sometimes we have to have some of these difficult experiences to understand then that oh actually my health is much more important to me than I realized or my happiness is more important to me or having joy is more important to me than I actually realized all right I create loving successful relationships So relationships can be about enjoying other people but also learning from other people. All right, so I accept all my imperfections. I'm able to see the whole picture. I refuse to accept bullying as a way to handle my problems and my understanding grows each day. All right, I live in the present at all times. So sometimes that can be hard. We can have had past experiences Ah, that were very difficult and anything that looks or smells or seems like that is very tricky. All right, understanding love and tolerance grow daily. Mutual respect is paramount. I keep on my path regardless. So sometimes when we have a lot on or we have a lot of people to worry about, we can get off our path. That's how our health can suffer or we get into the bad habits. All right, we accept our differences with love. So often the people around us that trigger us are the opportunity to change how we see things or the opportunity to accept different points of view or perspective. And I think as we get challenged, we understand more and more what does bring us joy. All right, mistakes are allowed to be stepping stones to success. Ah, We allow time and space for grieving and healing. So I'm sure if you think about it, there's probably experiences in your life that are still trapped in your body or your mind or your energy field. And so we need to allow healing and expression of what's happened and to allow ourselves to grieve for what was lost. So whether it was a person or our health or opportunity, you know, these things need to be allowed to be grieved for, but also to become the springboard to change. And I guess the other thing that's important is whatever we do it needs to be um, sustainable. Like sometimes before Christmas we go crazy preparing things, but it's not sustainable and then there is a crash. So it's like then we have to pick ourselves up and, you know, put things back into a sustainable situation. All right, so now something's stuck in our L3, so in our lower back. Oh, Margaret's got a do-it-yourself spray. Fill a spray bottle with filtered or cool boiled water, one tablespoon uh, witch hazel, eight drops of essential oil. Great job. Thanks, Margaret. That's a great way. And then you can choose whatever oils you like at that time or things that might uplift you. So you can have a double purpose. Not only is it cleansing, but it's also uplifting. Go you. Thanks, Margaret. Pray to release our pain. Yeah, very important. Because the pain is the teacher, isn't it? So once we've learned the lesson, we don't need the pain. All right, so what's coming up is commitment in relationships. So sometimes other people aren't as committed as we are in the relationship. All right, again, we've got some feelings stuck in L3. Resisting authority is coming up. Age six, so who was the authority that you were wanting to resist when you were age six? And also something in our neck now, so C5. So C5 is also the sugar circuit. So it's like when we eat too much sugar, our neck will not be right. All right, um, what's coming up in C5 is embarrassment. So what do you feel embarrassed about? And sore throat's coming up. So I don't know if anyone's got a sore throat or they're, and so, you know, sometimes when we get emotional, we don't feel like we can say something to make your throat very sore too, or even your sinuses to hurt. Uh, probably a teacher. Okay. Then what else is coming up is low self esteem. Oh, the catheter bag. Okay. So with a catheter bag currently or the catheter bag when you were a kid? All right. We're going to jump into the crown chakra now. All right, I connect easily with life and the people around me. Now, not everyone's going to be our our tribe, but finding people that we relate to and connect to. 
And then we bless each other's lives. All right, my heart is open and flowing. All right, so catheter bag now. So are we having bladder issues or incontinence issues? So stress from holding on to negativity and struggles. All right, bladder's had it. I guess learning to do pelvic floor exercises can help too. We can begin somewhere even if we just practice even if you practice just pulling up inside or if you lie on your back and you put a pillow between your knees and you squeeze the pillow with your knees and then you lift your bottom up so you become a bridge and squeezing inside as you do that so start with what you can do things can change things can repair and bladder meridian runs all like starts in the corner of your eyes right in the center and runs over the top of your head, two stripes down your back and all the way down to your little toes, very long meridian, connects to your back. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen Ina Siegel's book. She's got a book called The Secret Language of Your Body. Mine's a bit beaten up. But I even found it at Big W. Um, it talks about different aspects of your body and ways to clear it, of like thinking. She always talks about divine healing intelligence, but... It's like what's stuck in our body. If it, if it had a voice, if your bladder had a voice, what would it say? What have you got stored in there that you can let go of? All right, uh, what's coming up also in bladder is uh, feels overconcerned with survival issues, money, job, health, lack of order, obsessed with order. So I guess for us to create something different, we have to imagine it first, how we would like it to feel, how we'd like it to be. And to do a little baby step each day towards that direction, you know, do one thing to help. And I guess with our urine too, like if if we're not having enough water, our urine gets very concentrated and can be very dark in colour. So it really should be straw coloured. So I take a lot of um, vitamins, so mine's usually fluoro yellow from those. But even then you can tell if it's like too concentrated or if it's clearer so you know again comes back to the water and also if you eat a lot of vegetables like if you eat that 80 percent vegetables then that's uh, vegetables and fruit have a lot of water in them so that will increase your fluid all right something else in the back so l1 Mm, so what's coming up is needing to forgive from l1 what are you needing to forgive sometimes it's who we need to forgive uncle uh, an uncle for being naive so sometimes people do things thinking they're doing a good job and they're not <laughs> one of my uncles used to um, like to torture you He'd like try and bend your arm back the other way he probably didn't understand how torturous that was or maybe he did <laughs> I don't know Yeah, so forgiving your uncle and also forgiving ourselves for for being naive as well. Sometimes we we think other people are kind and loving like we are and not everybody is. Some people have had awful experiences in their life that has made them be a bit bitter and twisted, so they have to have experiences in which they can untwist themselves if they choose. And, you know, sometimes we have to work on the um, remembrance of the good experiences in our lives, the the faith-filled experiences or the experiences that made us feel that um, God intervened in our lives in some way. I think we've all had experiences where we nearly died or we've had experiences where, you know, it could have gone very pear-shaped and it didn't or sometimes it did go pear-shaped but we still survived. All right, something else in the spine again. So T9, we've talked a lot about spine today. Kathy, who's on the call, she does a spinal flow technique that does help remove blockages as well. Oh, her uncle just died. Oh, okay. We can feel very sad about that, isn't it? We often get mad with people that die or they get sick. You know, it wasn't what we had hoped for them or for ourselves, although we know we will all die. So hives was coming up. So I don't know if anyone has hives at the moment, but sometimes that's like a reaction to things that we've eaten or felt or drank or bugs. 
Uh, T12 is coming up too, so it's a bit lower. That's the last where the little ribs are at the back. Uh, Difficulty digesting life. Um, Deep-seated belief that you deserve to suffer and struggle. Back to the heart chakra. So I guess that comes back to the joy, doesn't it? Finding joy in life. Was your uncle Judith somebody that you loved and admired? Would you like to remember the good things about him? Is it worth to write those things down? Could you write a letter to your your uncle about what you're grateful for? The other thing that's coming up in the heart chakra is breast lumps. So sometimes we can have congestion in our breasts. Um, Often the wire bras aren't so wonderful, and yes, I wear them too, but I think sometimes we need to have some bras that are not wired. Maybe we need to massage our breasts a bit more, help help our lymphatics. You know, I use a dry skin brush before my shower, like on my arms and face and all over my body. So you can do that, like that dry skin brushing to help your lymphatic system. You can also use like a little rebounder to bounce up and down to pump your lymphatic system. It's like that all needs to move. All right, allergies is coming up. All right, so we can have allergies to feelings just as much as we can have allergies to things that we eat or breathe or contact or drink. Oh, he died just after your mum. So, oh, I see you've had a lot of grief, haven't you? What's coming up is critical thoughts. So, so critical thoughts of ourselves. So if you worked for a boss and you did, you know, you you tried your hardest and the boss said, yeah, that was really good, thank you so much, you did a great job, you'd feel really good. If you tried your hardest and the boss said, oh, it was all right, but, you know, you forgot this, then you'd feel a bit more like that. So if you think like that with your body, your body is, till you take your last breath, your body's always repairing, regenerating, renewing, it never stops. So if we show love to our body, it tries even harder to help us and to work for us. If we criticize our body, it's harmful to our body. It actually damages us. So we have to be very mindful of how we think about our body and how we talk to our body. So I struggle with this myself. So it's like we, we need a constant reminder to show love to ourselves and show love to our body and have gratitude for our body no matter what condition it is? We have a body. We're alive. We're here. It's it's here to teach us. All right. So how's the back feeling? And we had three lower backs, didn't we? So how are our backs going? Uh, Judith says, "I guess I'm my own worst person." That's all of us, Judith. We're all happy criticizing ourselves. So it's like. You know, maybe that's the one thing to change for this week is that I'm going to show love to myself. You know, is that love by drinking more water, doing things that bring us joy, you know, listening to uplifting music or doing things that help us to feel that life is good. And even though there are many parts of life that are challenging, as it needs to be so that we grow, we also need to find the bits that we love and the parts of ourselves that we love. What part about you do you love? What part of you do you think is wonderful? Is it your hands that can sew and that can show love? All right. I wish you well. Enjoy the new year. Let's kickstart our health all together and let's make it a year of health and happiness. All right. All the best. Bye.